were the indigenous foods of the past? That's the big question. We start to take a look. What we see when we start to look and we start to regionalize the food is that there are areas, and I call this TEK, and this is huge on an academic level, guys. We're trying to get it into the culinary world. So what is TEK? Traditional ecological knowledge. Every culture has it. Every culture has knowledge. Let's look at the Northwest Coast, salmon. The people in the Northwest know every kind of salmon there is. They know when it runs. They know how to harvest it. They know how to smoke it. They know how to dry it. They know what berries there are. They know what plants, on and on and on. If you are from that region, outside of that region, do you think you know all of that knowledge? No. You only know it because that's the ecology. That's the bioregion. Indigenous cultures adapted, consumed, survived, thrived on plants, herbs, fungi, meat, all kinds of ingredients based on their homeland and their ecosystem. Now, to think that they only survived on that is inaccurate. They traded. We see that there are four periods. We are in this period. You guys can be active participants. Pre-contact, history. First contact, foods that got brought by Europe. Government issue, it's the fry bread, it's there, it's real. And the new Native American cuisine. And this is where we all can work together, we can all participate, we can all revitalize the corn necklaces. You can buy ingredients, I can help you source them. We can keep this alive and we can do it together. So, so we have a dish that we'll prepare that is uh, pork, it ha it's a pozole, it, por it has pork and it's spiced with paprika. But it's, I, to me, in my mind, that speaks to um, speaks to the Spanish conquest and as those Spanish conquistadors that came through and affected the foodways with with that one animal. Um, so, and, and so going back to ancestral knowledge, it's it's in the stones, it's in the river, it's in the it's in the land, it's place based and it's it's interpretive. So each one of you have that same um, interpretation of where you come from. It's beautiful and it's all your own. Um, so, uh, so if you want to frame ancestral knowledge and you use land advocacy, that's essentially capturing what a, what a very well-known chef, a well-known chef says, capturing identity, time, and place, and that's Mr. Red Zeppi. Um, and so, in in doing this, in doing this type of work, we're really revitalizing our culinary traditions, but making them relevant to where we are today. No longer are we looking to. The, the, the classical French model as the standard for, for, for cuisine, fine dining. It's more place-based and a uh, little more intelligent, really cool, and it just makes the diversity of our cooking today just amazing. What I basically want to do is I want to take culinary terms. I'm a chef. I want to take culinary terms, and I want to bring them to the language. Our people, our language is nearly lost. As a culinarian, as a chef, you, you know, what are the first things you learn in the kitchen? You know, you learn mise en place, you know, everything get everything ready, get everything in this place. So I asked for my first word was that, because I figured that would be a good foundation to help spread to the community, to those that work with me, those who uh, I'm responsible for. And so that word that came out was agwigu goi anadao, everything in its place. And that made sense. And that kind of began to be more of a spiritual, had more of a spiritual meaning than just a culinary spirit, spiritual or a culinary term. Food. Food is art. It's what you put down. That's what it's going to look like. It's going to make it taste good. You want to make it, make it, you know, make it feel good again. Because food is our medicine. That's how I look again. And that's when I realized, when I started going back into my culture and realizing what food is.